today, NVIDIA's new GPUs have a big bonus. Intel's ARC GPUs got up to a 750% performance uplift. Great news for NVIDIA GPU owners, and AMD just released their Ryzen Hybrid Core CPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have some great news regarding NVIDIA's upcoming Super GPUs. I'm calling them Super 2.0. So far, we've learned core count for the upcoming cards as well as gotten an idea of price and performance. But today, we actually learn about power consumption. And as you can see from the Resident Leaker Cubite 7 Kimmy, NVIDIA's upcoming Super cards will have the same power consumption over their non-Super counterparts. So even though we see a boost in performance, actual TBP will remain the same. That is for the 40 80 Super and 4070 Ti Super, because he later clarifies that the regular 4070 Super comes with 20 watts more than the regular 4070, and that makes sense given the 4070 Super has the biggest jump in cores over the regular GPU. Still, I definitely like to see that most of the cards aren't getting some big jump in power draw. But if there's something everyone should like, it's learning all about computer science from this video's sponsor. Brilliant, the number one place I go to learn more about computers. Like their new course on LLMs, or large language models, the type of AI model that powers all the best chatbots like ChatGPT, Google Bard, and more. They teach you all about it in their new course. If that's not something you're into, they've got courses on pretty much anything you could want, from programming to search engine, PC memory, and everything in between. But the part I love most is that they actually teach you by having you get in there and do it yourself with these fun and engaging puzzles. So no more listening to boring lectures or anything like that, and it makes learning complex topics easier than ever. To top it all off, they're now offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you can get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Next up for today, Intel's ARC gaming GPUs just got a massive update yet again. What's so surprising about all of this is that Intel really seemed to be dialing back their GPU department. I mean, they combined them with other groups, got rid of their graphics head, Raja Kaduri, as well as their senior director of client strategy graphics and AI, Ryan Shrout. So you'd think that would have spelled doom for Intel's GPU division, but they recently released yet another driver that adds massive performance gains to their GPUs. I'm talking up to 750% better performance in DX11 and up to 53% in DX12. As you can see, it's the Halo Master Chief Collection that saw the massive 750% FPS improvement, but quite a few other games saw big jumps as well. 113% in World War Z, 53% in Guild Wars 2, 37% in Sniper Elite 3, and the list goes on. This is obviously great news for anyone who bought Intel's ARC cards, making them a potentially really good buy given their price. Of course, there's still a chance that Intel pulls the rug out after their Battle Mage release, but at least they still seem eager to give out support. And honestly, if Intel does exit the discrete graphics card market, I can honestly say that it'll be a sad day. Sure, they had some hiccups along the way, but it was really nice to see more competition move into the market. Time will tell if Intel continues to move forward, but for now, they're definitely doing good things. Next up, I have some great news for NVIDIA GPU owners. Bethesda has officially announced that support for DLSS with frame generation is coming to Starfield via Steam Beta next week. Now, I will say that this isn't too surprising given the backlash that occurred after WCCF Tech dropped their article comparing AMD sponsored games to NVIDIA, showing that most NVIDIA sponsored games eventually get FSR, while AMD sponsored games typically don't get DLSS. But as I've said in the past, it likely has less to do with AMD forcing companies to do it and more with the fact that FSR supports both AMD and NVIDIA. I mean, think about it. You likely have to include support for FSR to be sponsored by AMD, so if you already have FSR, there's not a huge incentive to add DLSS, because FSR already supports NVIDIA GPUs. Of course, we know that DLSS generally looks better, so that's why it makes sense for NVIDIA owners to want it, but it looking better is nowhere near the same difference as it doesn't work on your card. Not to mention the fact that FSR is also what consoles support. Either way, the update is coming, and according to the announcement, DLSS is only coming to PC users, and FSR 3 support is coming in a future update, so good news for pretty much everyone here. 
And lastly for today, AMD just announced new Ryzen CPUs with hybrid cores, and they're seriously impressive. In fact, AMD announced a ton of new details on their Zen 4C efficiency cores, which shed some light on the new technology. As you can see, AMD makes some pretty major claims when comparing their hybrid architecture cores to Intel's. For starters, Zen 4 and Zen 4C both use the same instruction set, unlike Intel's, so they have the same IPC. Zen 4C has multi-threading, it also apparently doesn't require an OS scheduler like Intel's, meaning Windows doesn't have to pick and choose the best cores during operation, leading to potential points of where the CPU doesn't perform as well. So Zen 4C does have some pretty nice positives going for it when compared to Intel. Though, of course, Intel's efficiency cores are quite a bit smaller. When it comes to performance, you can see the CPU with Zen 4C cores does much better at lower wattage. And obviously, if they're able to include more cores in the higher end parts, it'll end up being better performance at the higher end as well. When it comes to the actual chips themselves, as you can see, AMD released two new Ryzen 7040 processors, the 7545U and 7444U, and they're based on Phoenix 2. Of course, if you've been following the channel, you've known about Phoenix 2 for a little while, so make sure you subscribe to be one of the first to learn all the new PC hardware news. When we go over the specs, you'll notice that they aren't all that impressive, but AMD will likely expand these out to higher end chips in future generations. Either way, the 7545U comes with two Zen 4 cores and four Zen 4C cores, and the 7440U comes with one regular Zen 4 core and three Zen 4C cores. Now when looking at the specs, you will notice that AMD doesn't and separate out their big and little cores, which I do think is an issue. There are obviously performance differences between the two, so AMD should disclose it. Obviously, it makes spec sheets more complex, but Intel has taken that route, so AMD absolutely should as well. All in all, though, AMD's hybrid core architecture is looking very impressive, and I seriously hope they bring it to more powerful chips soon. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's hybrid core CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!